We're now going to talk about this idea of motivational interviewing in physical rehabilitation and introduce the, some of the ideas that MI advances in terms of evoking the patient's motivation. A key idea that motivational, motivational interviewing advanced was about something called change talk and sustain talk. So change talk are ideas that come from the client or patient's mouth that are about their motivation. There's a few different types, desire, ability, reason, need, uh, taking steps and commitment. In our main training, we go over all of that in great detail, so you can, this is just kind of a brief introduction. So what we've done is we've tried to kind of break it down into, if you will, this idea of green talk and red talk. So as an example, the, a patient might say, uh, well, I want to do my rehab, but, um, you know, I want to do my rehab and go home and play with my grandchildren, but you know, this rehab, it, it really hurts. The, my knee really hurts, and I'm just I'm tired all the time from the medications, so I'm yeah. having a tough time. Right. And so then what I'm going to try to do as a provider is listen and say, oh, there's some red talk, some sustained talk. I want to honor that and may reflect it, but not spend too much time there because you can really just kind of get caught up in that and not get forward momentum. And so I want to favor temporarily the green talk to help, in this case, Brian really, you know, make a case for why he should follow through with whatever the therapies are. so that he can eventually get home. And the more Brian hears it, the more it comes out of his mouth and into his ear, the idea is he owns it. He'll say, oh, I can't argue against that. I was the author of that idea, that's mine. And then if I reflect those ideas back to Brian, the hope is he'd be like, it passes twice in front of his brain. He's like, oh yeah, this really is important to me. So you'll see that process of kind of distinguishing between the red talk and the green talk in our conversation. And then I really want to get greedy with it. So in addition to seeing the change talk, I want to extend it. And so I want to use some questions or reflections to help Brian offer more and more change talk. And then sometimes we also evoke that change talk by doing questions that will help him to talk through it. Does that sound all right to you? Sounds good. How does that fit in your world so far? Just at a conceptual level, this idea of uh, the importance of motivation and then some ideas about how to promote motivation. Sure, you know, when people are in pain and, and when they're tired, you know, there could be a lot of concerns or, or complaints and you can get caught up in that and maybe trying to counter their complaints or their, their concerns and then you just keep going going down. But if you focus more on more on the positive and where they're trying to go, I think that's that'll definitely be more beneficial. Yeah, and that's the idea. Is that focusing on that green talk promotes their motivation so that they can kind of push through some of the difficult times. Okay. So let's imagine, Brian, we've already got to the agreed upon goal, uh, which was to uh, play with my grandchildren. Okay. Mm -hmm. And to do that would be, so the, the target we have is a, as, as a professional, as a provider, is to help you follow through with your OT and your PT? or Right. Yeah, exactly. Just follow through with, with the exercises and just make sure you're safe to go home so I, I don't fall. Excellent. So we'll just kind of demonstrate this again, and really what we're going to try to notice is the amount of time spent in actually ev evoking and cultivating that change talk, rather than getting one example and jumping into hell at. So Brian, tell me a little bit more about like what would be the advantages of you actually following through with you know these these protocols. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd be able to get out of here. I like this place and everything. Yeah. It'd, be, it'd be nice, but to go home and, and play with my grandkids because ever since you know my knees started hurting I, I couldn't so mm -hmm. I was really looking forward to this surgery I, I really you know I knew I'd be on my feet again and moving more but now that I've had this surgery I'm just in, in so much pain and with the pain and there I get some more meds and then that makes me tired and then I'm just losing a little bit of my motivation to, to do anything because it's, it's just it's, it's difficult you know right you want to do these things so you can Leave the facility as nice as it is, but you don't want to live here permanently. In right. part because you want to be back with your grandkids and help them out. Right, right, yeah. exactly. Let me, let me ask you from a different angle. Um, let's say you don't do your exercises. What do you fear might happen? Well, gosh, you know, I'll just get weaker. Mm -hmm. I think if I, if I don't, and I, I've seen that a little since I've been here, is I haven't been doing my exercises like I should, and I've been getting weaker, and then you get weaker, you get a little more tired, and it's getting worse, so. You, you know, value being strong. 
I, yeah, yeah, I do. Because like, what's in it for you when you're getting more active, doing the things that you like to do? Like, what what are some of the if you mental health benefits, maybe the physical benefits, social benefits? Yeah, and with my family too. You know, my children see how active I am, and they're more active. And then my grandkids, they see how active you know Grandpa is, and then they start moving more. Right. So. Yeah, it's just it just goes down, and I want to see them be more active. I don't want them to see me just sitting in a chair because my knees hurt and I'm just I'm too weak. You really are a family guy. You talked mm -hmm. a lot about the importance of family and how you want to have a certain type of life. And doing your exercise will help you connect to that. It'll help you move forward. And we may have kind of already asked about this, but what do you fear the most of not doing it? So, what's your dark fantasy, like if you will? Of, like if you do not follow through with the recommendations, what might go poorly? You know, I'd probably, not even a walker, I, mean, I think I'd be in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. A walker I think would be too much. And then, you know, if I feel like I'm in a wheelchair, um, I think I'll just get less active and, and, and more dependent on my family. And that's, yeah. that's what scares me. That's not, that's not where I want to go. Connects back to the values again. Now notice what we're doing is, once Brian offers some green talk, I'm trying to reflect that. Because if it comes out of his mouth once and into his ears, that's, you know, if you were one rehearsal, I repeat it back, he says, yeah, that's right, and then maybe extends the conversation. Then it's becoming more and more of his. That's, that's what we're trying to accomplish. Okay, so we've done a little bit about this idea of getting some change talk, trying to evoke and extend it. The last step I might do is a summary and say, hey, Brian, you've mentioned a variety of reasons why you it's, it's important for you to get out of here. You like being a grandfather, you want to be a good grandfather to your, your grandkids. You don't want it to cascade or kind of dwindle or spiral down into not being active where eventually you've lost your identity. You're not even doing those things that you really care about. Mm -hmm. Is that about right? Yeah, I think you, you summed it up. I just, I just want to be there for them, so. Um, right. Yeah, you got it. That's a lot of motivation. Is that enough motivation for us to actually talk about how you could be successful here? I think so. I think that's, to me, it's, it's very motivating. So I'm just wondering, okay, how do I, now how do I do it? Yep. Hey, you came to the right place. Let's talk about that. All right, we'll freeze here for a second. Brian, what did you notice? What did you think about the idea of kind of chasing change talk or, you know, evoking change talk and then chasing it around so you get more and more? Does that seem like it's applicable in your area of practice? Yeah, yeah, you made me realize if I kept continuing on the road that I was going, where would I end up? And maybe I hadn't, I hadn't thought of that yet. So mm -hmm. the patient thinks about, okay, where am I gonna end up? I'm gonna be like this. Well, do you, do you really wanna be there without even asking that question and realizing that, no, this is where I wanna be. Okay, right. you know, so starting, that's my motivation is I wanna be there. So just focusing on that, more of the how can I do it instead of you know reasons why I can't do it. Excellent. Uh, and that's the idea of MI, is that the clients talk themselves into this idea of like, this is what I need to be successful. Mm -hmm. All right, you good with it? Yeah, and it was really helpful yeah. that when you summarized it, I got to hear it again, mm. you know, because I might time, yeah. talk for five minutes or so, but you summarize it quickly, and I'm like, yeah, that's exactly how I feel. Well, I already, I just told you that, so yeah. I'm hearing it again, I'm like, he gets it, and I feel like I'm, like there's a team, and I feel like uh, he understands. Right. And that's interesting, even in a role play, you might be like, oh good, this is a good guy, he's with me, we're on the same team. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's going to help you know, our clients be more motivated to do the things that they need to do. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you. We're gonna now do bad practice in just a second, so hang tight.